lines. Now for those of you who've only ever used your laser for cutting wood, this wouldn't have been an issue. Now for someone who comes from the paper crafting side of things, this is important to me. Now laser cutters are very accurate, but I have discovered that where the laser actually starts to cut is not exactly where it does cut. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not very much off, but it's enough off that if you're doing a print and cut of small items, it's going to make a difference. So what I've attempted to do is to calibrate my settings so that when I do a print and cut, I know it's going to cut pretty much where I want it to cut it. So in order to do this, I ask that you download the file that I've given you and this will come up like this. Now you can take this and you can set it to cut and you can set it to whatever material you are going to be cutting it from. I just use printer paper and if I set mine to printer paper, my settings are power of 30, a speed of 32. Now I've got the 20 watt version. If you've got the 40 watt, it's gonna be less than that. Okay, so we can now actually ungroup all of this because we don't need it to be grouped. This is solely to give you the size. So the total size of this should be 150 by 230 millimeters. So I'm just going to set that to no output just so that it's still there, but it's not going to do anything. And I'm actually going to rotate these around. It's a bit easier to put the paper that way around. And now I can actually resize this. It's not very far off, but it'll be a little bit off. So the size of this, the height is 149.89 and it should be 150. So I'll put in 150 here and it will give me the 230 because the two were linked together. So now I can in fact take that away, just delete it, and I can just use one of these squares. I don't have to use them all. When you have the file, just print it off as is. That is important because that means you'll print it off. It should be the size that I've given you for all those squares. But you can just use one at a time. You can delete these if you like, just to save confusion. You don't need to have them. But once it is printed off, you're going to use that print to be where you're cutting out your squares. So you put the print onto your cutting bed. Now, the most important thing about your placement is that you get it truly horizontal. But if you are using, uh, for example, a honeycomb, make sure your honeycomb isn't going to shift. Wedge it in with a piece of card or something like that so that it's in one place and it isn't going to move. And then if you put something like a ruler, for example, along the edge and then place your paper to that ruler, it will probably be easier than placing the paper to the edge of the honeycomb because it might slide underneath the honeycomb. It's less likely if you're holding a ruler down to actually slide underneath the ruler. And that will enable you to have your print properly aligned. Then put it down in place with magnets. So now we've got our square and we've got the laser which is around about here. Now your laser module position comes along this line here. I have the latest version, it's version 2.1 I think it is, of XCS. It only came out yesterday or the day before. It's now 31st of August 2024. So what you want to do is to make this square go to where the laser is. Now you might be tempted to think, okay, if you've got the magnetics on, it's going to go in there and it's going to be the right place. Well, let's have a look. Down here, my laser module position says it's a 171.43, uh, that says 171.63. This says Y21159. That says 211.91. So I have tried various processes, but the one that I found is most accurate is the one I'm going to show you. So first of all, you do need to do your distance test. So in this case, with the new software, it's up here. 
Now what I want you to do is to go to the framing and put the laser down in the lowest position. So now my laser is only like 10 millimeters from the paper. The reason I do this is because it makes the crops, the laser crops, smaller. That is easier to line up with the corner of your square, which is what you want to do. So go to the material, move your laser head, and move it over to that top left corner. Once you've done that, you want to come down here, sorry, you want to come down here and notice where your laser module position is. So my laser model position is X149.87. And my Y is 210.32. You want to put those figures in up here. So 149.87, that is left to right. I wish actually they didn't put X and Y on here because a lot of people don't understand X and Y. 210.32. Okay, put that in. You can see that it's moved it. You would think that would probably be it, but what I want you to do is to go to your processing, cut that square and see if it's where it should be. If it is, fine. You don't have a problem. If, like me, it didn't, you need to measure how far it needs to move in both directions. Now in my case, my x-axis, my left to right, had to be moved to the left by 0.6 millimeters. That's a tiny, tiny amount. But my y-axis had to be lowered, so I need it to go further down, by 1.45. So once you know what the measurement is, and this is why I've given you a whole page of test squares, because they're all printed off and you'll be able to just go to the next square and next square and etc. Once you know what it is, you can plug in those coordinates plus your extra number. So you will always use the laser position down here, but you will either add or subtract the numbers that you have found your machine needs. Once you've done that, and you've got it down and you know that it's right, note it down and every time you do a print and cut you'll do the same thing. So you will lower your laser, mark it on the corner of a square or rectangle or whatever and then you'll adjust your laser module to where it is supposed to be. You'll put, it, um, put the numbers up here after you have added your particular adjustments and then you can carry on and you can do whatever you like. Because XCS doesn't have a print function at the moment, we can't print from XCS. We can only print from something else. So when you actually decide to do a print and cut, my advice would be to just draw a very fine line rectangle around the images. You don't need registration marks because if you use registration marks to do this, the registration marks are normally too thick. They're too chunky. You want a very fine line. So if you print a very fine rectangle of a certain size, it will mean that when you import the file into XES, you can resize it, and then you'll be able to use the same rectangle as your registration marks, basically, and put the little laser over the top there. And that's how you get it to work.